Hello, my name is Dave Verdun from C2C Solutions. Uh, I've been asked to put together a very short video on what QFD is, just to introduce it to those who are unfamiliar with it, give them a basic understanding of what the QFD process is. I've been helping companies with QFD for about uh, 20 years, a little over 20 years actually. So here we go. Uh, first thing I like to tell people, or like to mention, is that in my opinion, QFD is a really, really great technique with a lousy name. And one of the reasons it has a lousy name is because it came from Japan. And in, in Japan, they have a, have a, a phrase for it, Hinshitsu Kino Tenkai. And these are the kanji characters that represent that. And if you translate those kanji into English, these are the translated words that you get. And what happened at one point in time in the early 80s is uh, somebody picked the top three on the list, uh, quality function deployment. They could have picked... AMD attribute mechanization development or QME qualities mechanization evolution so the name really doesn't tell you much it doesn't fit those words don't fit together well in the English language so if I could and I can't I'd love to be able to change the name of QFD but you know you're never gonna change it because it's been around for too long but I, I like telling people if I could change the name I'd call it customer inspired product development that's what the essence of QFD is. And if you if you like acronyms, call it CIPD. And I've had some companies that did exactly that, but most people know this as QFD. So let's get into it. Now, the goal of QFD, this methodology, is pretty simple. It's to understand your customers better than they understand themselves. It's to determine in advance how to judge customers uh, or, or how the customers will actually judge a product's value then design that into the product a little bit different order how will customers judge value and then let's understand that and design it into the product another goal of, of QFD is to achieve uh, agreement and buy-in on what the customer requirements are very often is there a miscommunication or a misunderstanding or a misinterpretation between marketing engineering manufacturing quality uh, on what the requirements are so one of the things that we want to do and one of the things that QFD is very good at is uh, breaking down those barriers uh, another goal of QFD is to translate the customer needs into development goals and technical capabilities once we understand these customer needs there's a series of, of matrices and charts and efforts that go through to translate those to every phase of product development and you'll see that in a roadmap I'm going to show you in a few few slides by the way I'm going to show you 20 slides and uh, hopefully this will take about 10 minutes um, another goal of this process is to provide documented requirements traceability so for all the requirements you'll know you'll be able to see exactly what we're doing to meet those requirements and then downstream when somebody has a tolerance that's super tight on a on a on a, uh, a part you'll be able to track back to the requirements that dictate that it should be that way. So this how-why logic works very well too in QFD. You'll also find that QFD is there's a, a lot of logic and structure, not a lot, but the right amount of logic and structure to the front end of product development. And the other, another goal of QFD is to prioritize your resources. That's a big goal of this process is to take a look at of a lot of things a lot of requirements and figure out which are the most important and which are the ones that we really need to be spending extra energy on to make sure they uh, come out properly so you'll see that as we go through the process uh, we actually have a course that we teach on QFD and I'm just gonna uh, scroll through these if you want to pause and look at what's covered in the different chapters you can there's an introduction chapter there's a voice of customer chapter 2 Chapter 3 is all about this house of quality, building it. Chapter 4 is about inspecting the house of quality. Chapter 5 is the design phase of QFD. 6 is the manufacturing process phase of QFD, which is an optional phase. 7, production control. Uh, and then in Chapter 8, we get into how to plan a QFD project and how QFD and other tools can integrate nicely with each other. And then we have uh, pitfalls and keys to success and, you know, an appendix with, uh, you know, just some extra information in it for what that's worth. So the QFD process, uh, I'm going to skip this slide. Uh, 
one other thing I want to show you is the top 10 reasons that people consider using QFD. And again, I'll put it all out here. And uh, if you want to read these in more detail, you can just pause the video. But these are some of the biggest reasons that teams decide that they want to use QFD. Uh, and they're all correct except number five, uh, you know, needing to impress the boss with a big complex looking chart. That's obviously there for a joke. But uh, there are um, these charts that we make in QFD and if you do QFD properly you shouldn't have big complex looking charts. You should have nice simple um, relevant charts and you'll see that a little bit as we go through and explain the process. One other reason that you might want to consider this uh, reasons companies consider using QFD to help them in their in their process is historically if you if you were to uh, map how resources are used on a project as a function of time. So watch this graph being built here. Um, let's say the beginning of the project is time zero right over here and then over at the the uh, end is the, your launch or your deadline for when the, the project is done and uh, production starts maybe. Uh, if you were to ask yourself how do you use resources as a function of time what we've found is your your resource deployment as a function of time looks something like this red curve where you have very low resources on the beginning of the project and then they slowly ramp up as you get closer and closer to your deadline and typically right before the deadline you get a lot of activity okay and what's happening in this time frame uh, there's a lot of firefighting going on here uh, panic redesigning solving problems mid-course corrections, uh, poor communication between groups, um, something we call whack-a-mole engineering where you fix one problem and you have another surface, uh, blaming on why we're spending all this time in fixing these problems. All we're trying to do with QFD and many of these proactive tools is go from the reactive product development to more of a proactive approach to product development. So your curve would look something like this as far as your resources as a function of time. We would spend more energy up front, and what we'd be doing here is we'd be planning a little bit better. We'd be focusing on, on the customer's needs, spoken and unspoken. You know, we'd be improving the documentation, uh, the communication between those functions that are needed. We'd have more cross-functional involvement, teamwork. And we'd essentially be trying to do it right the first time. So, you know, this whole graphic here is all about, you know, paying me now or paying me later. And if you were to look at uh, the area under the curves in these two graphs, what that area represents is energy or work that goes into bringing a product to market. Or costs, you could even look, like, look at it as, or resources. All of those are less the better characteristics. And if you look at the area under the red curve versus the area under the green curve, the proactive curve, um, the area under the green curve is less you'll spend less overall time and energy if you do things better up front. We all know that inherently. One last thing I want to talk about before I show you the QFD flowchart uh, is uh, why projects get delayed and why products fail. One of the key reasons. So there was a research project that uh, took a look at the key reasons for project delays and failures and it created a little Pareto here of the biggest to the smallest reasons actually the top seven reasons on why uh, uh, projects get delayed or, or products fail and you can read here you know poor product definition technological uncertainty lack of management senior management support lack of resources poor project management failure to prioritize your efforts strategically and poor communications. Now the point I want to make on this is QFD as a tool will help three of these seven really well and uh, the other four it helps a little bit. So what do you think the the uh, the three that QFD really helps in and let me you know if you want to pause and guess that's great otherwise I'm going to show you right now. Um, this is my opinion is that QFD will tackle the biggest reason for project delays and product failures which is poor product definition it's really great at that it's also really great at helping you prioritize your efforts and helping you communicate relevant information to your development team it also helps a little bit in these other four but the main reason that QFT helps are the the first and the last two okay so let's talk about uh, the flowchart for QFT now 
some very generic uh, product development steps uh, you can see here in this flowchart. Uh, first, you've got to get a team together and have a project in mind. Then there's voice of customer. You need to understand your requirements, prioritize those, develop metrics, evaluate the competition. So that's the requirement phase. Then there's a design phase and a process phase. And uh, this is a very logical, uh, generic product development process. Our QFD flowchart will flow that same way. The flowchart is actually on page 18. This is a very simplified version of it on 17 here. We start with planning the project. The second main step is doing the, the research, the customer research, voice of customer research. We document that well and prioritize it. We refine it, benchmark the competition, develop metrics and goals, and look for opportunities. Then we generate concepts, evaluate those concepts, pick one, do the detailed design, and manufacturing. Design of the product here, design of the manufacturing process there. So that's a very simple flowchart. The actual uh, one page summary of what we call EQFD, E just stands for a little bit more efficient, a little bit more effective, and enhanced because we bring in some other tools to help out the QFD process, and it's a little bit more elegant. So that's what the E stands for. So it's going to look really scary. I'm going to bring everything out just to show you what we're, where we're going with this. I know there's a lot of stuff on this looks very scary but when we break it down into steps it's actually very logical and uh, uh, very efficient so let me backtrack out you know, all this scary stuff and just take it one step at a time and explain at least the big picture here each one of these ma these main steps that you're seeing also has some more detail behind it but for this introductory video we'll just give you a high level understanding so the first step is project charter Here's where we, we decide what our mission is as a, a project team. What, why are we even together? So they issue the mission statement. Then we figure out who are customers that we're targeting. And what market segments are we going after? What is the scope of the project? What goals do we have for the project, at least at a high level? What are the constraints we have in a project? Who's going to be on the team? That's your project charter information. The next main step is your voice of customer. Uh, where you where you really want to understand your customers needs well and we've got many tools about uh, at least uh, half a dozen probably close to a dozen different methods to get out at understand customers you know spoken needs as well as the latent needs the things that they don't sp speak about but are very important to them so we do Kano Kano analysis um, Gemba visits, we go out and you know understand what the customer needs. They call it contextual inquiry, right where the source is, interviews, observational research, ethnography, and uh, and some other techniques to go beyond what customers can articulate. The VAST process is a tool to help organize that information, affinity process. We do qualitative and quantitative VOC. So uh, the output of that, and I'm, I'm very oversimplifying it, but the output of that is a list of requirements. And depending on how complex that list is, complexity being measured by the number of requirements, if, if, it's, if it's relatively simple, in other words, under 25 main requirements, then we can go right into this thing called a house of quality that you may have heard of. And I'll talk a little bit more about that in a minute. If you have a complex project and there's, there's more than 25 requirements, we recommend a big filter. Uh, we call this the pre-house equality, or sometimes the the VOC opportunity matrix. But it's a it's a, a method of taking all the needs and then prioritizing them before we get into the house equality. So the output of that, these critical customer requirements, would then go into the house equality. I'll show you the house equality in detail in just a second, but let me show you the rest of the roadmap first. Once we understand the requirements well in this house of quality which is taking the needs and figuring out importance of the needs and looking at the competition and developing metrics the highest priority from that step will go to the next step and then typically we have a decision whether we're looking for an evolutionary improvement in this uh, product or service or are we looking for something revolutionary if it's evolutionary we'll go in and generate concepts and evaluate those concepts and eventually come out with the one that's looking the best and do the detailed design on that and then look at if it's a manufactured process and on what the manufacturing of it's gonna look like and maybe all the way into production controls 
So the detail of the design is here, the detail of the manufacturing process is here, and the production control activities, if you take it that far. This shows you how far you can take UFD. You don't have to take it this far. If you're looking for a revolutionary improvement, you know, breakthrough uh, ideas, then we have a whole different set of things that we bring into QFD, which fall in the area of innovation. We actually have a, a, an, an innovation approach with, as you can see up here, about 25 different uh, methods for idea generation and, and problem solving. So um, now, if you notice out of each of these main phases, the highest priorities go into the next step. That doesn't mean we ignore the lower priorities. That means we just manage and track them differently. So on each one of these, there's a little escape chute for the lower priority things. And we use our normal way of doing business to take care of those. We use this rigorous process of QFD for the highest priority concerns. So that's essentially the QFD roadmap. And uh, we bring in other techniques to help along the way like you know lean methods or FMEAs and DOEs and fault tree and so on those other techniques we bring into the phases of QFD to help along that process so there's one last note here I want to show you it says here uh, the above steps up to the house of quality are relatively project independent that means that no matter what you're working on uh, these initial steps are pretty much the same whether you're working on developing a product, a system, subsystem, or component, or a software, or a service, or a business process, it doesn't really matter what you're trying to develop. The, the initial steps are, are pretty independent of the project. Uh, after the house of quality, it says here, um, you know, steps past the house of quality are very project dependent. So depending on what you're working on will dictate what these next steps look like. Okay, uh, one other thing I want to show you just to give you a little bit more detail of the house of quality. I believe I put one slide in there. Yeah, here's just a, a blown up example of a house of quality and what it looks like really quickly. We, in a projector, let's say we want to develop a next generation projector. On the left side of house of quality are the needs, customer needs. Then there's importance ratings because not all needs are equally important. Then there's competitive assessment, see how we stack up to our biggest competitors. We translate the needs into metrics. If somebody says, I want bright and quiet. That means, uh, bright means we measure that by lumen output, and quiet is by noise level in decibels. Uh, so we translate these into metrics, and we set targets for each of those. We evaluate how these metrics impact customer needs. It's called the relationships area. We look at technical difficulty numbers. We look at what direction we want to go to make customers happy. We look at potential conflicts, which is what the roof is about. The bottom is another technical graph versus a perception graph. And then there's some numbers that we calculate to get a priority. So there's your your 30 second description of uh, the house of quality. And uh, to summarize here, because I wanted to keep this video short, uh, I know this is a little bit cheesy here, but uh, quality function deployment is all about creating customer value. And customer value means a lot of things. It means listening to your customers. It means a deep understanding of their needs. It means documenting and prioritizing their needs. It means tracking and communicating those requirements, understanding the competition, identifying conflicts, communicating those requirements, uh, obtaining buy-in on all stages, ignoring some of the customer needs, uh, reducing the development time, providing a logical structure, integrating complementary tools, innovating and going beyond VOC, and translating that VOC into product specs. So um, that's your quick introduction to QFD. Hopefully that was helpful for those who wanted to learn a little bit more about QFD. If you have, uh -oh, if you have any questions, uh, you can certainly forward them on to info at c2c-solutions.com or, uh, well, that's probably the best way. So thanks for watching and uh, have a great day.